Welcome back everyone to the State of the Nation. Now the biggest conversation about our nation's economy is whether the newly proposed parliamentary approved domestic debt restructuring program is good for the little guy. But still, uh, depending whether this move was good uh, for the better health of our nation's economy in the future, the current governor of the central bank, who's the architect of the domestic debt restructuring program, along with the president, the cabinet and the SLPP government, who initially said that they will never go to the IMF, now thinks it's the best deal. Most of us think that the domestic debt restructuring efforts are part of the IMF-led discussions. But sources well known of those discussions tells me uh, that, in fact, the IMF has not requested this restructuring. However, when they were presented with the proposals, they remained silent about it as well. The funny thing is, if the so-called liberal economist and think tanks have been professing so much uh, and telling us how much we should be going to the IMF and asking them to help us to fix our economy, well, one might think that, well, when they help, they will listen to whatever the IMF says, don't you think? Now, the irony is that the IMF, in fact, is advocating against domestic debt restructuring. In an article written in 2021 by Peter Brewer, who is the current lead negotiator for Sri Lanka and the IMF, he says that domestic debt has a high potential of creating losses for the little guy. In his article, he argues, uh, and I quote, on the other hand, domestic debt is often held predominantly by domestic creditors who will suffer losses through this channel. Sovereign debt distress can easily spread to domestic bank, banks, pension funds, households, and other parts of the domestic economy. This can add to the economic malaise that made the debt restructuring necessary in the first place. So basically what he's saying is that if you go down the domestic debt restructuring rabbit hole, you will have a high chance of hurting the little guy, which will in fact create the same kind of unrest that initially led to the need for the nation to be, rest uh, to be restructuring its debt. Basically, by doing this, he argues, you will be at square one. Now this is said by the guy who negotiated our $2.9 billion loan with the IMF. So it is coming directly from the IMF. I'm not making this up. It also beats the question, isn't it? Why are we doing the same old thing in the same old way, just with new packaging this time around? I think it was Einstein who said um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Joining me now is the opposition member of parliament, Iran Vikramarathna. Thank you very much uh, sir, for your time. Um, now that the domestic debt restructuring proposals are being uh, ratified by parliament and the discussions are underway with the creditors, the opposition who initially said that the restructuring is the way ahead is now parliamentarian saying that proposals put forward by the government and the central bank is faulty. Why are you saying this now? Uh, Mahesh, it's uh, interesting that you ask that question. We have always been supportive of going to the IMF and then uh, debt restructuring needs to be done. The government told us constantly that they will not be doing domestic debt restructuring. So debt restructuring needs to be done. So they suddenly came up with a proposal which said treasury bills in the central bank, they'll come right into bonds and the bonds, they said they will also look at restructuring that. Now, un unfortunately, they focused only on the bonds held in the Employees Provident Fund. That is really the big issue here because the Employment Provident Fund will take a big hit. Now, uh, most people who save in the Employees Provident Fund, uh, I would say more than 90 percent of them, this will be their single saving in life. They work 30, 40 years, they go to work every day, they live with dignity, they look after their kids, educate them, their parents, their grandparents and live with dignity. If they live another 20, 25, 30 years, then they are dependent on the EPF balance in actually doing it. And that is why we feel that it is unfair. So the, really the question is not the debt restructuring. One is why are we doing a domestic restructuring and if you had to do a domestic debt restructuring, why have you confined it only to members of the Employees Provident Fund? Private people have benefited from it. If you are privately invested in it, you have actually benefited greatly from it because you get the higher returns. In addition to that, if you, uh, you know, you, you try to safeguard the banks, that was your argument, but the owners of the banks, windfall gains because stock prices have risen on that. So, 
the whole issue here is a question of equity. There is no equity in this and therefore, we are that is the reason we are very critical of the way in which they, are, they, they have gone about the, doing this, not so much in the principle, but in how it has actually been done. Understood. Uh, parliamentarian, did not the SJB collaborate uh, even in committee stages to form this proposal? Because if you did, have your recommendations uh, been included? Uh, actually, I think you use the wrong word. Uh, you do not use the word collaborate because we do not collaborate. Proposals come from government. Governments are the executive arm and governments put forward proposals. The IMF agreement was an ag agreement negotiated by the government. They had it first at the working level with the officials of the IMF. We were not shown that. Then suddenly the president arrives in parliament and it is a done deal, it is a signed deal and he reveals it to parliament and when he revealed it to parliament only we come to know about it. So, there is no question about collaboration. In principle, we were all for going for the IMF, we had been screaming and shouting about it for 2 years, but actual transaction was done by government. When it came to the debt restructuring, it is no different. They completely told us that they will not be going for domestic debt restructuring and uh, from the beginning I came out publicly about a year ago when there was a hint by the president that you might need to even take a haircut. I came publicly and said no way that we are going to tolerate a haircut. We are a country has gone through a crisis, right? the complete mismanagement, printing of money, inflation soared, food inflation to 100 percent, general inflation 70 percent. If you or I had a saving, that saving had already been halved in terms of value because of inflation. So, we have already uh, taken our hit. So, there was no question of collaboration. We once they were going to do it, then they came in and said this is what we are going to do. From the moment they said that, from the first discussion we said what we are first is we are surprised that you are doing domestic debt restructuring because there are three things they had to do. One is they have to get the, uh, g the, the debt overall debt as a percentage of GDP. It is about 128 percent. Middle income country should get to 60, in the in the mid term it should get to 95 percent. Then the gross financing need had to be brought to down to 13 percent, right, which they said they cannot do without doing domestic debt restructure. And then debt servicing is needed and cash flow is needed about 17 billion dollars they told us is needed to be saved in the process. But we have never collaborated once they told us this, then we brought the question of equity and we said this is not fair. If you have to do it, do it in a fair way so that private people do not benefit, but uh, and just do not take a hit only at the workers in the country. It might cause social instability. Absolutely understood uh, that very clearly. Uh, thank you very much, uh, parliamentarian. We have to leave it at that. Uh, that was Member of Parliament from the opposition, Samagi Janapalaveke, Iran Vikram Rathna. Now, I want to get more insights from the business community on these proposals. And when I say business community, I mean the small and medium enterprises of this nation and not the 1% whom we recently saw praising this proposal, mainly because uh, they are not affected by it much. Joining me now is the chairman of the Sri Lanka United National Business Alliance, Tanya Ame Sundara. Thank you very much, madam, for your time. Good to see you. Uh, point blank. Are you happy with the domestic debt restructuring proposal and what are your reasons if you are not okay with it? Thank you uh, Manish, good evening and thank you Derana for having me once again. It's always a pleasure being with Derana. Yes, it, it is a very important question that you asked us. Are we happy and what are we at right now? We are not happy at all. As, as a whole, uh, we as the SMV, that is the small and medium entrepreneurs are being murdered and shrunk and put into a situation where we have no longer air to breathe. Now, if you were to take uh, the today's current situation, uh, we as the SMV, generally we are the economical backbone. I mean, SMV is called the economical backbone in every part of the world and so is in Sri Lanka because we host uh, nearly 4.5 million workforce and we contribute to the country's GDP, 52 percent to the country's GDP. So, that in whole is a huge uh, uh, contribution that we pay towards the country's economical uh, strength. Now, the government, the policies that they have been taking and they have been implementing and when the government called uh, the country bankrupt uh, nearly eight to nine months, nearly a year back. What was the exact situation of the country? No, the country's uh, inflation was at th 36 percent and soon as you call the country uh, bankrupt, the inflation went up from 36 to 80, 90 percent. So, who created the inflation? There was never inflation, that inflation was created by the government. So, I still stand to say the country was never bankrupt. 
country was still not bankrupt. It's that the country was never bankrupt, the government was bankrupt, and the government made the central bank bankrupt because most of the funds that are supposed to be generated to the country's economy was utilized for the government. So that was the reason that the country went into bankruptcy. Absolutely. Uh, Madam, uh, very quickly, we are short of time. Uh, what do you anticipate in the next few months due to the restructuring effort, especially uh, I I with regard to the domestic debt? Uh, I would seriously, very shortly, I know you are running out of time. I will try to explain this too very shortly. Uh, Mahesh, what I believe is uh, our SMV has been uh, uh, virtually uh, contracted uh, to about 40% of the SMVs have been uh, in a, like, you know, 30% have been shut down. Another 20% is struggling and another 10% will be shutting down very soonly. So if you were to take wholly about 50 to 60% of the SMV is very badly affected. Now, why due to the wrong decisions taken by the central bank? Why was the decisions taken? Because they were trying to uh, control uh, uh, inflation, uh, what was created by the government government but through suppressing the SMV and that is exactly what they are doing right now. Now the interest have gone up so highly. They are restructuring the SMV debts. I am asking the government if you were to restructure the debts at a percentage of 16 to 17 percent okay and the new loans that anybody would try to acquire would go up to about 23 percent. That is a uh, PLR rate plus 2% uh, to 3% would be the 23%. Now, I am asking Mahesh, how can somebody borrow at a rate of 23% and a debt that is being restructured at a percentage of 16 to 15 to 16%? Now, our liabilities in hold are more than our incomes that has been uh, we generate because the utility bills have gone up by 300%. Bank interest from one digit to went up to absorbent amount for 36 to 40 percent and the secondly uh, the dollar fluctuation has been affecting us so badly that uh, we have been having goods raw materials accessories that was bought for nearly 400 rupees and when the dollar keeps fluctuating well, very unorthodoxly uh, we are the people who suffer it's not the multinational companies so putting all this into consideration it's one huge basket against the emptiness of a little bit of oxygen the government is trying to give us. So we are being intoxicated by so much of carbon dioxide and we are trying to, you know, have a little bit of oxygen. So can we breathe? Can the economy survive? You have to realize, Mahesh, if the SMV falls, the country will collapse and today the SMV is drowning, falling and it's been murdered because we are the biggest taxpayers and these tax are the ones that keep the government going. It's not the multinational companies. These people can always go into another country, set up business because their business won't collapse. But if you were to take the SMVs, we have to depend within the country. The country is our backbone and the, the country has to realize if the SMV collapses, economical backbone will collapse and the country will be dead before you know. Yes, makes uh, a lot of sense. Let's leave it at that. Thank you very much. That was the chairman of the Sri Lanka United National Business Alliance, Tony Anderson. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the State of the Nation. Back in a moment.